Sanctuary is the world in which the story of Diablo takes place. And it's the battleground for the souls of humanity and the fight between angels and demons. Sanctuary is a vast world, and there'll always be something new in every area, like hordes of enemies, safe haven towns, resources to gather, events, quests, and more. We wanted to bring Diablo 4 artistically more back towards like Diablo 2, the much darker style. It's very macabre. The artists and designers have had so much fun working on it, and it's just been a joy to create for us. How would the people of Sanctuary show their world? What kinds of art would they use to describe the world? One of the things we really wanted to do was make the game feel like a painting. Everything was built by a wonderful group of people who love Diablo as much as you do. We have five unique zones. Each of the regions has its own kind of flavor and ambient life. We take a lot of influence from what our concept artists give us, and I know they take a lot of influence from real life. There's Kedjistan, which is the sort of desert. It's amazing with its sweeping sand dunes. Skaz Glen, which is inspired by Scotland. Fractured Peaks is inspired by the Carpathian Mountains. The Dry Steps is sort of our mountainous desert region, and Hauzar is the swampy region of the south. Whether you're on a mount or on foot, it's a joy to go from one region to the next. Also, the region transitions are really beautiful and stunning to see. Making sure that it felt sort of geologically true was really important. If you walk from Fracture Peaks into Hauzar, you'll cross all of these waterfalls caused by snow melt. So you can actually see the snow melting in Fractured Peaks through waterfalls entering into Hauzar and entering the large basin that fills Hauzar with all of the swamp water. We have all the different environments in the overworld, and we tried to make sure there was some parity with those in the dungeons. We have dungeons that are flooded, and there's like moss everywhere. It very much fits in with that Skazglan environment. Kedjistan is all desert, so we have dungeons filled with sand. All the dungeons are particularly placed to make sure that they feel like this is a thing that could be in this part of the world. It fits here, it belongs here. We definitely redesigned some of the monsters. For example, the Fallen family has gone through a major redesign to make them feel more grim, a little scarier, a little darker, to match the tone of Diablo IV. Monster families are a way to describe the group of monsters that create a combat experience. A lot of times they'll be brutes and swarmers, melee or casters, and that's the term that we use to sum up the vampires or the drowned or the undead. And all of them have unique abilities, but they all synchronize together. They bolster each other and improve how they work on the battlefield so that every time you fight a pack of, let's say, goat men, it's always different. We wanted to make sure that the monster families all felt like they fit in their environments, and so our creature team did a really good job of making these different versions of them that have adapted to their environment. There's snowy goatmen and fractured peaks in some of the colder areas versus lightning goatmen around dry steps and kind of the more arid areas. Hauzar has a lot of poison spiders. Each of the regions has its own kind of flavor and it's pretty exciting to discover. We have some really cool new snake men, the Nangari. We've seen snake men in Diablo before, but these guys are just really twisted amalgamations of multiple snake heads, even human body parts. We have skeletons, we have undead, we have ghosts all the things that you would expect to find from a Diablo game. Spiders have been around in Diablo forever, but the spider host was a cool new twist. It's a giant spider that attaches to a corpse and then puppets it at you, and when you kill it, it explodes with tons of baby spiders, and then those little spiders come after you, and I feel slightly guilty about traumatizing a lot of people with it. We also have wildlife, deer, snakes, bugs, dogs. You can pet the dogs, by the way. So many people ask to pet the dog. <laughs> It was actually a, a lot of hard work to figure out how to put that dang dog. You have so many activities that you might run into. It could be a stronghold, it could be side quests. You might have key dungeons to do. There could be bounties to pick up. You might encounter a world boss. You might encounter an invasion event of some kind. We have much longer, sort of narrative-heavy side quests, and we have some shorter side quests, so you never feel like you're always doing the same thing. The pacing is always a little bit different. One of the things that I really loved about our announcement was the By Three They Come cinematic. I was able to build a quest where you actually get to go to those places. You get to go to the town. You get to go inside the chapel. And I worked with some incredible dungeon designers to build the dungeon from the cinematic. You're gonna get to go across the bridge that you saw to the actual room where Lilith was summoned. I don't want to spoil too much, but I'm super excited to have players see it. 
Sometimes it's kind of nice to just walk places because that's a lot of the times when you see these little events. You might find a demonic altar that you need to feed your blood to, to summon demons to then defeat for all of their loot. You might find a ghost child who's trying to find the remains of their parents and you have to protect them. We have strongholds, which are a sort of large area that you can enter and it has its own story, its own setup, its own sort of art that sort of tells a very specific story about this location. And those stay unlocked permanently once you've beaten back the darkness. We did a lot of figuring out the balance between like how much space do we need for players to play through these dungeons versus how much space do we need to make them look cool. My favorite is this one called Endless Gates. It's got these teleporters, and these teleporters actually take you to other dungeons. So you'll end up in a cave, a crypt, or one of the ancients. And every time you go in, it's designed to change. And there's dozens of villages and towns that you will run into. The cities and towns are designed to be hubs. They're, they're havens. They're places where you can find other players. They're good places to do all of your usual inventory management. Each region has its main city that you can get lots of side quests and lots of activities. We've really crafted the world to feel like there's always something just around the corner to find. In Diablo 4, you actually get to walk Sanctuary. It's a massive place that you can seamlessly explore with no loading in between zones, which is something brand new. It's a very immersive experience. What I love about it is that you can go in a direction and you might be searching for a particular quest or an item and you'll come across a stronghold that you haven't explored before. You'll come across dungeons that have legendary affixes or you might discover a side quest that you didn't even know about that fills in some bit of lore that you actually were interested in. There's any number of things that can happen along the road to your destination and that's what I love about having this fast space. There are tons of different types of events in the world. It's been created to feel full of things to encounter, full of secrets to discover, full of characters to interact with, full of stories to find. We have these altars to Lilith that if you can find them, they will give you a permanent buff to all of your characters across the game. There are tons of them hidden everywhere. We also have these massive world bosses that are so big the camera actually has to pull out even further. And you're gonna have an opportunity to fight these bosses with your friends or with strangers to take down these huge world bosses. And the team has done just an incredible job making Sanctuary a world worth exploring and a world worth investing yourself in.